welcome to your fifth grade science class for Unit 5. This is Day 2, January 7, 2021. Our learning target for today is 5.7a, I can explain the processes that led to the formation of sedimentary rocks. 5.9d, I can identify fossils as evidence of past living organisms and the nature of environments at the time. So let's start by reviewing the formation of sedimentary rock. So yesterday we learned that sedimentary rock forms when materials and rock particles settle on top of one another and then harden. Uh, it can begin with a larger rock and through the process of weathering, erosion, and deposition, the rock becomes smaller and breaks apart, is carried away, or is deposited somewhere else. At that time, um, those particles begin to build up, and the weight of the new particles press down on older layers. Minerals from the water may act like cement, so you have the process of cementation. That process holds the particles together, and eventually the squeezed layers become rock or sedimentary rock. So compaction is the process by which overlying pressure from rocks and soil reduce the size or volume of sediments. So if you see the larger picture off to the left um, is then compacted into the smaller picture, reducing the volume of it. Compaction and cementation. So over time, the deposited grains and pieces of rock are compacted and cemented together in layers. The compaction and cementation occurs when sediment is squeezed by the weight of the sediment layers above it. Each layers may be different from the next layer, depending on the type of sediment that is deposited at that time. We'll actually go more into detail about the different layers today. Also, one hint, fossils are usually only found in sedimentary rock. Okay, so I want you to know that fossils are not pieces of dead animals and plants. They're actually evidence of ancient life found in sedimentary rock. So let's talk a bit more about the fossils and the environment that they're found. Fossils are impressions, remains, or other evidence of an ancient organism formed in sedimentary rock. And looking at this fossil, it looks like a plant. So I'm assuming the environment at the time was on land or some type of forest um, or somewhere where there was plant life. What type of environment did this animal once live? If you said that this was evidence of seed life, then you are correct. Um, this is an imprint of a fish. And I'm assuming millions of years ago, fish still lived in the ocean. What type of environment did this animal most likely live? All right, if you said on land, I think you're absolutely correct. This little guy, has four legs and a tail and I'm, I don't see any fins. I don't see, you know, any evidence that he lived in the ocean. Um, so I'm assuming, yeah, this might have been maybe a lizard or some sort. And I'm going to say, yes, he lived on land. Okay, so let's review. What is compaction and cementation? Well, compaction is the process by which overlying pressure from rocks and soil reduce the size or volume of sediments. Cementation is the process of binding and hardening of sediments into rock. What do the layers in sedimentary rock represent? Well, as we learned, the sediment settles and it forms the layers. The layers actually represent the different types of environments that was present in that location at that time when the layer formed. 
What type of rock are fossils most likely to be found? If you said sedimentary rock, you're absolutely right. How can we use fossils as evidence of the environment that they lived in? We can use fossils as evidence to see how the environment has changed over time. Um, we can look to see if at that time the fossil lived, was it ocean life? And we have evidence of that if it's an imprint of a fish. Um, we can determine if there's evidence of plant life, and we can determine that if it's some type of plant. Um, so fossils can help scientists and us determine the type of environment in which the animals lived in.